All right. <laughs> Painting. Yes. How did that happen? <laughs> How did I know. That happen? When, when did I it happen? I mean, I'm right behind. I'm just, I'm still working on him. I'm not sure about the pink yet in the face. But. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's like, I mean, were you a painter when you were a kid or just you fell into it? I mean, uh, the story. Well, uh, my two oldest sisters are about nine years ahead of me. They were art majors and they, they got degrees in fine art. Mm -hmm. And so ever since I was a little kid, they were painting and drawing in the house and there was materials everywhere. Uh, both my parents worked, so my older siblings had to take care of me, you know, when I was a really young kid. And I, I think the way they used to do it would be they'd give me a pad and and a bunch of colored pencils and say, go sit and, you know, be quiet, go over there and draw. <laughs> so at a necessity to, you know, to, to keep me from bouncing off the walls, they had me drawing and I loved it. And my brother and I both did it. We used to draw rat fink stuff all the time. I don't know oh yeah. Rat fink. Funny car kind of stuff. And, hmm. and I just, I just always went in that direction. Like whenever I could draw, I, I got into it, but as we, you know, discuss the football, the fitness team, rock and roll. I just, those became priorities to me, but I always w was drawing and, and it didn't really click until I was, I was in LA recording uh, the extremist album and I was down at the uh, La Park. Uh, I knew we stayed there a million times. And I'd lived there for about five months trying to get the extremist album done. And um, I, and I was, drawing all the time and and that was the first time where we took some of my drawings and put them into the the album and the cd package and then uh the dario suggested we do some stuff with straps and picks and then the drawings wound up in posters and t-shirts and hats and the, and then they be you know then i started to digitize them and they wound up in the backdrop during the live shows and uh about eight years ago uh, I, I turned to Rubina, uh, my wife, Rubina, for, for those people who don't know, Kenny, you know her quite well. Oh, she's amazing. She's the coolest. And, and she's got a degree uh, in art as well. So uh, I turned to her and I said, Rubina, help me. I want to paint canvases. I don't know the first thing about brushes and acrylic oil and solvents and, you know, so, you know, uh, typical fashion. She said, well, here's all the stuff go, you know, <laughs> just, just go make a mess. It doesn't matter what you do. Just take, cause she knew from scribblings all over the house, everything I'd done, that there was no controlling me that I, she just had to give me the opportunity. And, you know, so, um, I didn't even know what, what canvases to buy. I mean, I didn't know anything, uh, about the basics of, of being a painter. I just knew how to, to be creative with it, you know? Uh, but it's important if you're going to sell art that you, you do it with the proper tools. <laughs> so, so it doesn't peel and fade and all that kind of stuff. So I started with basically my odd faces, and then I started to get into work a little bit more realism into it. Um, and then uh, a funny thing happened years into my development as, as a painter. Uh, I met the guys, uh, Corey and Ravi from scene four art collective, uh, down in LA. And, um, they, uh, as you may know, they do this series of really cool uh, art pieces where they film a musician playing in the dark, wearing gloves that have LED lights on their hands and maybe other parts of their body. And as they perform, they do these time exposure shots that, are, that aren't completely obscuring the musician, uh, but the trails of their movement winds up being a beautiful artistic statement of, of their musical energy. And uh, so I spent a day in, in the dark <laughs> playing my guitar really loud with these gloves on. And uh, during one of the breaks, I was talking to Corey uh, about uh, the artwork I was doing, that I was on this journey last number of years trying to teach myself how to work with canvases. And he immediately said, we should do something together. Let's you know, send us photos of your artwork. We'll put them into our, you know, scene four machine and we'll create these prints and we'll send them back to you and then you can paint on them. And I was like, whoa, that's so crazy. I never thought of that. I was looking at a blank canvas. Um, 
and things went really well. Uh, we had a show actually when in 2019 when we were doing the Experience Hendrix tour, and uh, that got me very excited because you know as musicians we do concerts and we go to radio stations and you know we have ways of being public with our music. But walking into a gallery and seeing your artwork and talking to people like it's a cocktail party, I, I just felt that the the exchange of uh, emotion and creativity to a fan right there was really powerful. It was like, you know, doing an intimate concert for people or something like that. It was just really fulfilling artistically. And um, from there, they introduced me to Christian O'Mahony, who runs the Wentworth Gallery. And they've got, I think, 10 galleries from Miami all the way up to New Jersey. Um, and that blew my mind because he said, well, you know, we'd love to have like 300 pieces. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, how do I Whoa. do 300 pieces? You know, I was looking at my art room and I, I think I had maybe 50 and <laughs> they were like, no one would buy those. They're like really weird looking faces, you know? So we started down that road of like, well, okay, how does a beginning painter start like what what you know how many realistically can i do and then can i concentrate on things that are you know part of my life so we started doing guitars and working in um, my themes of outer space and aliens and and natural things around uh, just being an american and, and growing up here um and all of a sudden i'm doing gallery shows we're selling hundreds of paintings and uh just this past weekend I was in Atlantic City and, and King of Prussia, and I was actually performing in the art gallery on guitars that I painted. Just, I mean, <laughs> the experience, it blew my mind because at one point I'm about to play, I think, um, If I Could Fly, you know, and uh, I'm standing there holding a guitar that's freaky looking because I painted everything on it. And there's a small group of people, maybe 25, you know, super intimate small amps everything's pretty quiet and i'm looking around the room and, and all over the place i just like the freakiest things that i paint and i was just thinking wow this is so crazy that i can still i almost like went back in time to when i was a little kid and i was in my bedroom and there was you know alice cooper and hendrix posters on the wall and i'm playing my fender <laughs> telecaster thinking one day when i'm a grown-up you know I'll, I'll be able to do this all over the world and uh, it, it was a great moment just to, you know, and to hear the stories from the, the art patrons that, you know, this couple used to always with me, always with you for their wedding song. And, and this person, you know, uh, had a connection with this song and that's, and you just, it always touches your heart. And so it's always, it's, it's always a very emotional experience for me. And, the, and having the art there makes it like double, you know. It's, it's, it's hard for me to explain. I'm sorry if I'm going on and on with my words, but it, it's, a, it's a beautiful experience for me each time I do these things.